Greetings Internet! Today I have for you what I am hoping will be a fun, interesting video, but at this point in the process I have absolutely no clue what's about to happen. Well, maybe a little bit of a clue, let me explain. I guess I'm calling this the Google Translate Cooking Challenge. I have here a recipe provided to me by Corolla Tea, which I have not read yet. And the catch is, it has been run through Google Translate and been translated through 10 different languages before going back to English. And so it may not entirely make sense. And I have to figure out how to follow those instructions and see what I end up with. And step one of that, which we're about to do, is going to be having a read through and trying to figure out what ingredients I'm going to need. So let's see, this is titled Biscuits, which is already giving me pictures in my mind, but I also know that biscuits can mean quite different things in different languages so that may have uh, become something else in the transformation but let's see mix teaspoon of sugar water yeast fresh yeast now that could be an issue fill the bowl with artificial water i'm not entirely sure what artificial water might be add flour or water to prevent the dough from forming that seems slightly counterintuitive. Cut the apple into full pieces. Uh, that also seems like it's going to be impossible. Place the dough in a warm place without filtering, which is, that's probably good because I don't know how to filter dough. And then the second to last step, peel an egg and cut it into apple slices. So somehow changing an egg into an apple slice is going to be an interesting challenge. But yeah, looking through this, most of the ingredients seem to be simple enough. I need flour and sugar and some vanilla flavour. Apples, magical egg somehow. Fresh yeast might be an issue at this time of day. I only know one place where I can fairly consistently get that. And you know, they are not open at this time of day. Because you know, bakeries tend to be sort of more morning operations. So given that I'm pretty sure the dry yeast I had in my cupboard expired like two years ago, I'll probably get another pack of that while I'm at the supermarket and then maybe hit up the bakery in the morning. I'm pretty sure I've got enough flour and sugar, so I just need to get some apples, some margarine, magical eggs, and yeast. Wish me luck at the supermarket, I guess, and we will reconvene tomorrow and try and assemble these instructions into something if actually edible. Okay, so it is the next day and I sort of think I've got all the necessary ingredients, but I am definitely a bit more concerned about how well I'm going to succeed at this at this point. Individually, each step seems like it's going to be easy enough to follow. But then when I actually, you know, zoom out and read this as an entire recipe, suddenly aspects of it make far less sense to me. Generally everything sort of seems okay, but there's, well, there's, this, there's a decent amount of instruction on what to do, but a sort of lack of detail of how exactly that should actually look. But anyway, let's get started. I've got fancy dual camera set up ready going. Upstairs neighbours appear to be vacuuming, which you may or may not be able to hear. And I guess I will just take this one step at a time and see what happens and maybe explain some of my uh, concerns along the way. Okay, so step one. Mix one teaspoon of sugar with 75 millilitres of warm water. Mix with 20 grams of fresh yeast and leave in a warm blaze without air for 10 minutes. That's a slightly odd way of telling you to seal the container while you're waiting for the yeast to do its thing. But in general, that sort of makes sense, so let's get that bit done. So we've got a teaspoon of sugar, 75 ml of water, get all that sugar dissolved. And 20 grams of fresh, fresh yeast, fresh from the baker this morning. Then we'll get that mixed in. Which we will then cover 
and leaf to do its thing. So then we can move on to step two. Add 225 grams of flour, 50 grams of sugar, a little salt, vanilla flavor, and 50 grams of margarine into a large bowl. That one seems to have mostly survived the Google Translate gauntlet. Some flour, sugar, a little salt, vanilla flavor, and 50 grams of margarine. So here's my problem at this point. It's obvious that at any moment I'm going to combine these two bowls and make a nice dough. But then the next step says bake for five minutes until the dough is smooth. Which, I don't know, sounds kind of like, you know, baking a pie crust blind. But as far as I know, you don't do that when you've got yeast in a dough. Especially when the step after that is to leave the dough alone for an hour, presumably to let it rise somewhat. So I think that probably means knead it for five minutes until the dough is smooth. But the problem with that is, is that's also step 11. And that made it through Google Translate without being affected. So unless they were originally phrased quite differently for the same task, then something's wrong here and I'm missing something. But I don't know what. I think I'm just going to have to follow my guts and go with the kneading, because baking it at this point for anything seems too soon. And while the instructions tell me how to make a lovely dough, they're very unclear on what exactly I'm supposed to do with it. Step eight, put the dough in a saucepan and put the apple slices on top. We'll come to the apple slices in a bit. But like a saucepan, that's obviously a slightly incorrect translation, but from what? Like I could put it in a saucepan, but I know that it's also got to go in the oven later. And I don't actually have any saucepans which are oven safe. At least not which are also small enough to fit in the oven. But that leads me a bit back to the pie theory, where they're talking more about a pie dish. But I also don't have one of those. Although I could probably manage with something like a big wide cake pan. But the reason I end up thinking pie is, is because later in the recipe it asks me to make a second type of dough. And it gives me even less clue as to what I'm supposed to do with that one. Apart from... Step 12, cool the flour. And what? It's like makes me think maybe that could be the pie crust that goes on top, which would need some vent holes in it and that would let it cool. But somehow I feel like even after Google Translate, there would be a few more instructions for that. But that's the only indication as to what, what I'm supposed to do with the second lot. So, but if it's not a pie, I'm getting this sort of visual in my head of some sort of large tart thing. I don't know, like a dessert version of Toad in the Hole, with, but with apples instead of sausages. But why would that be in a saucepan? And that also doesn't, wouldn't need a second dough anywhere. So honestly, when it comes to the end, I have a feeling I'm going to get this completely wrong. But seeing as if the whole thing is just a combination of flour, sugar and apples put in the oven for a bit, I imagine it'll be tasty. But I don't think I'm going to be doing this the way it was originally intended somehow. So anyway, step... well we are, we're only on step three. Fill the bowl with artificial water, stirring well. If necessary, add flour or water to prevent the dough from forming. Now, preventing the dough from forming seems like something I wouldn't want to do. It seems like I'm trying to do the opposite of that. And I'm presuming the artificial water is the, the uh, water and yeast mix I made earlier. It's time to put these two together and make a dough, including the step four of baking it for five minutes, which I'm pretty sure must mean kneading it. Although, I don't know. But I'm just going to do it at this point because there's only so many hours I've got to make this thing. Oh, 
Okay, so that seems reasonably smooth. And uh, not the best dough I've ever made, I don't think, but you know, it'll do. So now we've got to proof it. Step five, place the dough in a bowl and cover with a damp cloth. Lift the dough in a warm place without taking it for one hour. Okay, lift the dough in a warm place for one hour. I guess I'll see you again in an hour. If my arms hold out that long. Okay, so there's still a little bit of time left to go on the uh, on the dough but in there's things we can be doing ready for the next step in the meantime step six meanwhile put the apple into 400 to 500 grams and cut into full pieces that again is fairly vague and the wrong way around but i am going to take that as take 400 to 500 grams of apple and then chop them into chunks. Doesn't specify how, so I'm going to take the easiest way possible. I've got some different types of apples because, you know, why not? And you know what, I think to be even lazier I might even leave the peel on. So there we have 500 grams of apple slices. Um, We'll figure out what to do with those in a moment. While I've been waiting for the dough to proof, I pretty much convinced myself that I'm gonna make a weird sort of pie tart combination and just see what happens. I'm not even close to being convinced that's what I'm supposed to be doing, but I've got to commit to something at this point. So, step seven approximately 30 to 20 centimeters of oil in the pan. As I have mentioned once or twice before, that is uh, not entirely clear, but I'm actually going to take it as take a 20 to 30 to centimeter wide pan and grease it up in order for it to form my pie slash tart base. And the closest I can think of that I have to that is this cake tin. So I'm going with that. And to grease it, I'm just going to use a bit of the margarine from earlier. So in theory at this point, my dough should be ready. So let's have a look. That uh, hasn't really increased in size as much as I would have expected. So, I mean, I think it is a little bigger or maybe it's just a little bit flatter. I don't know. I've never been really very good with yeast-based doughs. I haven't done very many of them and uh, it's not something I've had super amounts of practice with. Following uh, step eight, put the dough in a saucepan and place the apple sizes on top. I'm going to put this in here and sort of gently massage it out to the edges and then cover it in the apple. That seems like a, a possibility. It's the wrong possibility, I'm pretty sure, but it is a possibility. The further I uh, go on with this, the less and less what I'm doing <laughs> seems sensible. <laughs> it sounded all right when I was thinking about it beforehand. It's like. Yeah, sure, but now I'm looking at it. This seems like a rather strange apple cake the pie thing that I'm doing completely wrong. And so again, it wants me to place the dough in a warm place and leave it for 30 minutes. At the same time, I then need to make another dough. So I guess for now we'll cover this. Leave that at the back there. So step number 10, we for some reason, as mentioned, have to make another dough. Add 150 grams of flour, 75 grams of sugar, aromatic vanilla, and 90 grams of softened butter. It doesn't say what to add them to or what to do with them afterwards. Step 11 is knead until the dough is smooth, but uh, you know, there's got to be some stirring and combining before you 
get to kneading 130 grams of flour, 75 grams of sugar, aromatic vanilla, and 90 grams of softened butter, for which I'm using exactly the same margarine as I did earlier. Which I guess I will then try and combine into a dough, but it seems to be lacking in a liquid component. Yeah, I'm making the executive decision that this is going to need at least a little bit of water if it's ever going to bind together in a decent way. Now this one is a different ratio of ingredients. But it still seems like quite a lot for the topping <laughs> given the size of the uh, what I've made so far. So I'm pretty sure that something is wrong here, but at this point it's too late to turn back. So, you know, I'm just going, I guess, to roll this out to about the same size as my container, put it on top. Don't know what else to do at this point. Okay, and then we're going to carefully sort of put that over the top. That wasn't as carefully as I probably could have been. This is the stupidest idea ever. How could that possibly ever be correct? Right, step 12. Cool the flour. Realistically, I'm not quite sure what that's going to achieve. <laughs> How I'm actually going to interpret that is that I'm going to cut some speed holes in the top of the pie crust in order for an, you know, steamed event. Then, penultimately, we have peel an egg and cut it into apple slices. Now, I can't think of any way that an actual egg would be involved at this point. And he does ask for more apple slices. So I'm going to interpret this possibly rather inaccurately as that I'm gonna take another apple, I'm gonna probably core and peel this one and then dot a like circle around the top of them for a bit more decoration. And so there we go. We definitely have something. I'm just not entirely sure what it is. The only thing that remains now is step 14. Bake at 180 degrees for 30 minutes. That I can handle. So let's see what we end up with in half an hour's time. Okay, well, the time has come to find out what kind of abomination I have created or not created. I mean, some things happened. No idea whether it's going to be any good. I guess we have to leave it to cool for a bit first. Let's get out on a wire rack. Okay then, let's cut into this thing and see what we've got, shall we? So yeah, you know, it has basically fallen apart into two pieces. The dough in the middle at the bottom doesn't appear to be super well done. So, yeah. There are some warm apples along with some slightly slightly soggy pastry that is definitely uh, underdone which tells me that that recipe and that cooking time was supposed to be for something bigger and thinner i might even pop this back in the oven for a bit but in the meantime let's call on corolla and find out what i was actually supposed to have made I sent you I sent you an email with the original recipe. Oh right, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and that is nothing like what I made. It seemed that during Google Translate for mine, rather than it making it 
harder to understand. It just removed all the detail. It wasn't very clear, you know. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's like make and make a lovely dough. Yes. Then what? Especially the was it the not the last step, but like the second to last or something. The one that was like complete nonsense. It's just like this sentence reduced to like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like we've made we 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 make one dough. We you put the apples on top, and then it's like. I don't know. Make, make, yeah. Add, add flour, sugar, vanilla, and butter. To what? Doesn't even say in a bowl. And then knead the dough till smooth. That's it. <laughs> so it's like, what am I supposed to do with yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> and then you have an egg that turns into apples. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still don't know what that is. I just, I just ignored the egg and peeled an apple. So yeah, I need to have a look at what what I was supposed to do. No, but before I do that, let me. Um, that's what I. That's what I ended up um, with. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you the first the first dough you put yeah, in, put in the, the first pan, dough in a circle and pan. And then you put on apples. apples. Put the apples on top. I put the other. Then right. made another dough and right. just sort of right. put it on top, right. sort of like a pie slash cake thing. <laughs> I mean, that that's pretty much it. Like minus minus the second apple and the second dough should be like crumbled up. But aside from that, that's pretty much it. So it said knead the dough until smooth, but it's like it yeah, yes. there wasn't enough water for that to ever become smooth. So I was like, I don't know. I guess I'll add a bit so it, I can actually make a smooth dough out of it. But it seems like I probably shouldn't have done that, and it would have made more sense. But, you know, I might have guessed that if the title of Crumble Cake hadn't somehow changed to Biscuits. Yeah, I think I think it went from... It went from... Have you have you read the original recipe yet? Um, right, yeah, no, not all the way through. No, I only glanced at it and then got distracted. Right, but you've seen the title. So I think, I think, I think it went from um, Crumble Cake to Broken Cake to Cracked Cake to Cracker to Biscuit. Ah, okay. That that seems like something that would happen. What 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 were the ones I was confused by? That fill the bowl with artificial water. Right, yeah. That 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 was what I thought it was. You know, <laughs> add, add add the yeast water that we'd made earlier. I put um one of the earlier translations I did with a slight well same recipe but slightly different phrasing. If you scroll further down, and I think. There, it's acidic water. Okay. <laughs> it's good. Probably good you didn't put yeah. that in, because I'd have probably yeah. thrown some vinegar in or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, right, cool. The flour is let the dough chill in the fridge. Thing is, I was kind of going pie at that point. I interpreted that as, you know, putting some holes in for steam escape. Oh, I see. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I, th I think I think my recipe, or the, the one that you sent me, did the same, where it translated dough or batter with flour. Yeah, I, I thought you, you could have probably just used a, a flat baking tray. That that would have worked. Probably. Yeah, I mean, when you when you see when yeah. you see the video, yeah. you'll see a. a the full video, you'll see me umming and ahhing at the beginning as to which way I should go on this. <laughs> and I obviously went the wrong way. Right. <laughs> but yeah, is it is it edible though? Does it taste good? Well, like I say, the, it tasted, the bit that was done tasted all right, but it wasn't done all the way through. The like centre bit of my cake things right. was a bit soggy. Right. I mean, it does. It it is a bit of a soggy cake because of the apples like shedding yes. all their moisture. I mean, it does keep for a while. So, I think I've I've had mine for three days. So, it's okay. I I'm pretty sure you can also freeze them. Like, I mean that, that it's yeast though, so it's best when it's fresh. But it'll do. 
and but it was a it was an experience. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you can you can try again with with the proper recipe. Yes, I probably tray. will probably will at, at some, some point. point. But, uh, but you know, while I've while I've got hundred grams of fresh yeast from the fancy fresh from the bakers this morning, mm. do it a few more times, or you know, some bread or pizza. Okay, so now is the next day again. Time for a, a few final thoughts. That was a very fun challenge, which very much tested the limits of my baking knowledge in order to, you know, make e properly educated guesses as to what I was actually supposed to be doing, which obviously I didn't do perfectly, but, you know, I got something which in the end did turn out to be ed edible. It did need longer in the oven. It was always going to be a little bit soggy because of all the apples, but uh, after another 15 minutes in the oven it was a lot more of a stable base and a lot nicer to eat. It's also keeping really well, but it's also nice enough that it probably won't last very long. But yeah, overall that was fun, super tasty, and at some point I will have to try doing the recipe the correct way and we'll see how that goes. If you want to see Corolla try the same thing with the recipe that I provided, there will be links to that video in all the various places. And the only other thing left for me to say at this point is thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.